Good afternoon and welcome. As David and Terry come together to be united as husband and wife on this beautiful day that God is blessing them with, we can see that God is smiling upon their wedding this day. And it makes it especially beautiful to have all family and friends here together to celebrate on this occasion their love as they profess it together in the presence of God and you, those whom they love. We do remind and ask everyone at this point in time, if you have a cell phone, Please make sure that it's either off or in the silence mode. And feel free to take as much as many photos as you'd like, including flash photography, up until the invocation, the beginning of the service, and then again after the benediction. You can take as many pictures as you want, but during the service itself, so that it's not to be distracted or disrupted to the service, we ask you to refrain. So this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let their room.
congregation may be seated. As we make our beginning, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Father of mankind, as you led in the wedding in Cana in Galilee by the presence of your own Son, so by his presence now make the occasion of this wedding one of celebration and rejoicing. In your divine favor, look upon David and look upon Carrie as they pledge their lives together in Christ centered marriage and fill their hearts with your unending love. Amen. We invite you now to hear the word of the Lord. The first reading is from 1 Corinthians 13, beginning at verse 1.
us and our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Dave and Carrie, and to all of our family and friends gathered here to celebrate this special day with you. Many fathers have walked their daughters down the aisle on their wedding day, but far few fathers get the privilege of sharing with them some words of comfort and peace and guidance from the God who created them and then unites them and blesses them in marriage. Thank you for this experience. Dave, more than a year ago, you came to Stephanie and I and asked for permission to be here our daughter. And the two of you set in motion a year-long process of planning and activities, getting family and friends involved in making this day very special day. How time has flown this past year. Carrie, you had a great group of friends, girlfriends to step next to you and help you with this. Our thanks to Heather and to all of you for being here for Carrie. The two of you have chosen to start your celebration off here at our Redeemer, a special church for our family for more than 50 years and for three generations. Our family has been here for worship, for school, for graduations and confirmations and funerals. All special celebrations in the life of God's redeemed people. And now we have that this your wedding. We have called this place as a family our church home. And now it's a new church home for the two of you as well as you begin your life together. A new generation of faith, of a faith legacy that continues. What makes this place and your wedding day so special is that God is present. But it's just one of the many places where God comes to us, and He has invited and you have invited Him to bless and to guide and walk together, beginning here. How blessed our families have been, and families and friends have been too, to watch the two of you grow up together in love, to begin that process of becoming lifelong partners, really best friends, leaving the safety and guidance and insurance and finances of your parents, and starting out on your own journey and a walk side by side. In his infinite wisdom, God knew that we would be all here this day celebrating with you. God also knew that several people would not be here. Grandfathers and grandmothers, great-grandparents, aunts and uncles and Kevin, and others that weren't able to make the trip. But they're all here in spirit. God knew your names at your baptism. He heard the strength and commitment of your faith at your confirmations. He has guided you through the building blocks of quality Christian education, truly a priceless investment that both sets of parents made for your future. And now both of you, in the new love that you found for each other, will make a commitment and pledge of faithfulness in his presence and also in ours in this place. Both of the Bible readings that you chose for today speak about the foundation of your marriage. First, on the foundation of faith in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then in the characteristics of what an enduring Christian marriage should look like. Virtues like patience, and kindness, and gentleness, and hopefulness, and trust. This coming April, the two of you will have been together for two years. You are still getting to know each other for your strengths and your weaknesses, your passions, and your anxieties as well. You are ready, you are here, ready to take your life's walk together because you love each other. Many think that that's really all you need in life. As the song says, all you need is love. But love is really just the foundation. Like a house, the foundation is unseen deep in the bedrock. And what people see is set on a hidden frame. Love is there to provide the unseen and stable commitment of how you treat each other. All of us love lots of people in life many different, for many different reasons and many different circumstances. But the far more important, what is far more important is the glue that binds that love tightly. That's the order of faithfulness and trust. You've told Pastor Hanky in some of your pre-marriage classes that you expect honesty and trust from each other. I pray that you get that. Each day as you say goodbye to each other as you get to work, and you expect your spouse to be faithful to you while you are apart, and you want to trust that their thoughts, their words, and their actions will strengthen your marriage, and not destroy it. Satan works so hard to chip away at your commitments and trust in each other. Little things that really don't seem to matter at the beginning, but yet weaken and crack the foundation of where you started. 
and then to displease the God who brought you together in the first place. So the Hebrew prayer in Genesis called Mizpah becomes really our daily prayer. The Lord watch between you and me as we are apart one from another. Stephanie and I gave that Ms. Ms. Pum marriage medallion to each other 29 years ago, and each day we were reminded daily of the love and commitment to faithfulness and trust that we share as husband and wife. You know, marriages take a lot of work today. Look around at the couples that you know. Their marriages haven't been perfect. Maybe you've seen the good times, but certainly there have been lots of struggles behind the scenes. In their love for each other, most have weathered the tough storms, they've kept the ship afloat, and are better and stronger life partners for it. Faithfulness and trust get couples through the rough waters. And you'll experience, like many, that a marriage relationship has its highs and its lows. It's been said that about half of all the marriages today end in divorce, though that number is dropping, it is still unacceptable to God. Couples aren't willing to work through their problems and strive for compromise. They've lost that loving feeling, lost their pledge to faithfulness and trust, and many feel it's just easier to quit and start all over. But when you look around, you're also going to see that there are many marriages that last far beyond 50 years. And it's only death that brings about the end of that lifelong trust and faithfulness that they pledged in their own marriage vows. I've been guessing in those marriages there have been lots of times of forgiveness, couples working through those tough times, admitting wrongs and seeking reconciliation, letting the glue of faithfulness and trust do its part. It never hurts other than maybe one's cry to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Those simple words go a long way to healing and happiness and stability in a marriage. Your marriage will go absolutely nowhere without a continual building of faithfulness and trust for each other. And without it, your marriage is destined for divorce. In a moment, the two of you will hold hands and look each other face to face and pledge lifelong faithfulness and trust to each other in sickness and in health, in prosperous and tough times, forsaking new and improved people and dreams for the time-tested, well-worn relationship you desire to create. And Dave, that starts with you. God created you to be the head of a household, to guide what happens spiritually and personally behind and beyond your doors, to love caring, and to cherish all the blessings that he gives you. It's said that a bride finds a husband who is most like her father. Dave, my sympathies to you. <laughs> and then also my blessings to you as well. I hope that you have seen in my role as the head of the household what is important in life, and also in the next. Behind you sit hundreds of your family and friends who have come to celebrate with you the best that life has to offer. They want your marriage to be healthy and happy and committed to each other. You also may be the first among your friends to get married, and they will be watching you to see how it works. They may have second thoughts if they see you struggling and unhappy, if they see you breaking your pledges and commitments to one another, you may be setting the standard for some uncharted waters with your circle of friends. I pray that you lead by example. In the vows you are about to speak, your love and actions become accountable also to each other, and also to your family and guests who are here to witness them. Pastor Henke and I, also as God's given, we have the God's given responsibility as his under shepherds to hold you accountable to those pledges and commitments as part of our love and our commitment to the as officials of the marriage. The Apostle Paul ends his writing in Corinthians by saying, love never fails. Jesus gives the command in the Gospel of John to love one another. All of us gathered here this day know that both of you love each other, and we are happy that God has led you to find each other as well. And now we pray for his blessing in your lives and on the journey that the two of you take together. Probably my most favorite passage of scripture is this, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will guide your path. And that is our prayer for you. Let your faithfulness and trust for each other first be grounded in your love and faith and service to God. 
and then be evident in your relationship with each other. This day is going to bring so many, many memories, not only for you, but for your family and your friends. We are surrounded and surrounded you to celebrate this, your very special day. But come Monday morning, or maybe the Monday after the honeymoon, when reality sets in and you both go back to work, hearing the 28 challenging faces who need to know Jesus as their Savior, and you dig to the challenges of the free market business world, I pray that my final words of advice to you ring true. It's not your wedding day that matters, but the marriage which follows that promise. It's in the days that we made for both of you that God has yet to do his greatest work and bring you your greatest joy. Congratulations. God's blessed to see you. And may he truly bless and enrich your life and your love together from this day forth and forevermore. Dearly beloved and dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, we are gathered here this day in the sight of God and of His Church, that this man and this woman may be joined together in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate, which God Himself has instituted and blessed, and by which He gives us a picture of the very communion of Christ and His bride, the Church. God has both established and sanctified this estate, and has promised to bless therein all who love and trust in him, and who seek to give him their faithful worship and service for the sake of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God has ordained marriage for the good of man and woman in lifelong companionship according to his good pleasure, and that children may be nurtured to the praise and the honor of his name. In Genesis 1, verses 27 and 28, we read, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created them, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful. He has further ordained marriage so that the love that you have for one another may be held and fulfilled according to his bountiful purposes, both in prosperity and also in adversity all the days of your lives. The Apostle Paul writes this time in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 21 and following, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Christian marriage consists in your mutual consent, sincerely and freely given, which you now solemnly declare before God, these witnesses, and before one another. David Michael Reston, are you willing to share your entire life with care? Will you strive to practice the virtues of honesty? forgiveness and loyalty which marriage requires. Will you love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, will you live in this holy union with her alone as long as God gives you life? If so, answer I will. Carrie Rochelle Kelly, are you willing to share your entire life with David? Will you strive to practice the virtues of honesty, forgiveness and loyalty which marriage requires. Will you love him, comfort him, honor him, obey him, and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, will you live in this holy union with him alone as long as God gives you life? If so answer, I will. I invite you now to face one another, making your promise repeating after me. <coughs> Carrie, I take you to be my wife. Carrie, I take you to be my wife. In front of God and these witnesses. From this time onward. From this time onward. To join with you. And to share all that is to come. To give and to receive. To speak and to listen. To speak and to listen. To forgive.
forgive and to strengthen you. <laughs> to forgive and to strengthen you. To join with you in sickness and in health. So that together we may serve God and others as long as we both shall live. Please repeat after me. David, I take you to be my husband. In front of God and these witnesses, from this time on, to join with you and to share all that is to come, to give and to receive, to speak and to listen, to forgive and to strengthen you, to join with you in sickness and in health, so that together, <coughs> We may serve God and others as long as we both shall live. I invite you now to exchange rings as a promise and symbol of your wedded love and faithfulness. Repeat after me. Carry with this ring I marry you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. David, with this ring I marry you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please join us. These rings are symbols of truth, and are offered as a pledge that the love here declared shall be like them, pure and enduring. May the giving and receiving of these rings ever be a symbol of the faithful and unselfish sharing of goods that you, as husband and as wife, in every circumstance of life will constantly develop and be also a reminder of the excellent Christian virtues with which you will adorn your marriage. To this end, may God bless you through the heavenly bridegroom, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Since David and Carrie have agreed to live the united life of marriage and have declared the same before God and this gathering, I pronounce them husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What God has joined together, men must not separate. Come, light now the wedding candle, declaring your union in Jesus Christ, the light of the world.
courage and love toward you, toward each other, and toward the world, that they may continue together in mutual growth according to your will in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance, that is his divine favor upon you, and grant you his peace. Amen. It is now my honor, delight, and privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. David and Carrie Rasmussen. Oh, 
hardware store to pick up her own
Nobody got, uh, was it too long to stand? Yeah, I did that on my shoes. Yep, you have to, yeah. It's a little bit, that was like 45 minutes, so it was a little bit of time, yeah. So you did a great job. See, there you go. See? There was something on the news there about high heels, about messy stuff like the Achilles tendon or something, like running and stuff like that. Yeah, did you see that? Now, back to our regular schedule program.